estrogen, progesterone, LH, FSH. How do these hormones regulate menstruation? Hello, Cybals! I am Ma'am Rosalyn Curibin, your science teacher for today. In this episode of Agham Alam Hub, we will describe the menstrual cycle and its phases. We will explain the processes occurring in each phase. Furthermore, we will appreciate the importance of feedback mechanism involved in menstrual cycle in maintaining homeostasis. In the next few minutes, we will explore science for another ah moment. Remember that hormones are chemicals that affect specific body organs. Hormones control many of the changes in the reproductive system. Each month between puberty and menopause, a woman's body goes through several changes to get it ready for a possible pregnancy. This cycle occurs every month from the first onset called menarche, when a female is between 10 to 13 years old. The monthly cycle continues for about 40 years. This series of hormone-driven events is called the menstrual cycle. During its menstrual cycle, an egg develops and is released from the ovaries. The lining of the uterus builds up. If a pregnancy doesn't happen, the uterine lining sheds during a menstrual period, then the cycle starts again. Only one egg cell is released every cycle or every 28 days on average. Now, let's find out the different phases occurring in menstrual cycle. A woman's menstrual cycle is divided into four phases. Menstrual phase, follicular phase, ovulation phase, and luteal phase. Ah! The menstrual phase is the first stage of the menstrual cycle. It is also when the female gets her period. Menstruation eliminates the thickened lining of the uterus, also known as endometrium, from the body through the vagina. The menstrual fluid contains blood, cells from the uterus lining, and the mucus. The average length of the period is between 3 days and 1 week. This phase starts when an egg from the previous cycle is not fertilized because pregnancy has not taken place. Levels of hormones, estrogen and progesterone, drop. The thickened lining of the uterus, which would support pregnancy, is no longer needed, so it sheds through the vagina. During this period, females release a combination of blood, mucus, and tissue from their uterus. Women may have period symptoms like cramps, tender breasts, bloating, mood swing, irritability, headaches, tiredness, and lower back pain. On average, women are in the menstrual phase of their cycle for 3 to 7 days. Some women have more prolonged periods than others. Ah! The follicular phase starts on the first day of the period. So there is some overlap with the menstrual phase and ends during ovulation. It starts when the hypothalamus signals the pituitary gland to release follicle-stimulating hormones or FSH. This hormone stimulates your ovaries to produce around 5 to 20 small sacs called follicles. Each follicle contains an immature egg. Only the healthiest egg will eventually mature. On rare occasions, a woman may have two eggs mature. The rest of the follicles will be reabsorbed into the body. The maturing follicles sets off a surge in estrogen that thickens the uterus lining. This creates a nutrient-rich environment for an embryo to grow. 
The average follicular phase lasts for about 16 days. It can range from 11 to 27 days depending on the person's cycle. Ah. Ovulation is the release of a mature egg from the surface of the ovary. This usually occurs in mid-cycle, around two weeks or before menstruation starts. During the follicular phase, the developing follicle causes a rise in estrogen level. The hypothalamus in the brain recognizes these rising levels and releases a chemical called gonadotropin-releasing hormones. This hormone forms the pituitary gland to produce raised levels of luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormone. Within two days, ovulation is triggered by high levels of luteinizing hormone. The egg is funneled into the fallopian tube and toward the uterus by waves of small hair-like projections. The lifespan of the typical egg cell is only around 24 hours. Unless it meets a sperm cell during this time, it will die. During ovulation, the egg bursts from its follicle, but the ruptured follicle stays on the surface of the ovary. For the next two weeks, the follicle transforms into a structure known as corpus lithium. This structure starts releasing progesterone along with a small amount of estrogen. This combination of hormones maintains the thickened lining of the uterus, waiting for a fertilized egg to be implanted. If a fertilized egg implants in the uterus lining, it produces the necessary hormones to maintain the corpus luteum. This includes HCG, the hormone detected in the urine test for pregnancy. The corpus luteum keeps producing the raised levels of progesterone needed to maintain the thickened lining of the uterus. Suppose pregnancy does not occur, the corpus luteum withers and dies usually around day 22 in 28-day cycle. The drop in progesterone levels causes the uterus lining fall away. This is known as menstruation. The cycle then repeats. Ah! When we say feedback mechanism, it is the process through which the level of one substance influences the level of another substance. This is important to maintain homeostasis or equilibrium balance in the body. The same hormones that control female puberty and oogenesis also regulate the menstrual cycle. These hormones are estrogen, luteinizing hormones, and follicle-stimulating hormones. Estrogen controls the secretion of two pituitary hormones by acting on the hypothalamus, which controls the pituitary gland. This is shown in this figure. When the estrogen level rises in the blood, it stimulates the pituitary gland via the hypothalamus to secrete more or less luteinizing hormones and follicle-stimulating hormones. In negative feedback, rising levels of hormones feed back to the hypothalamus and pituitary gland to decrease the production of the hormones. In positive feedback, rising levels of hormones feed back to increase hormone production. Ah! In this episode of Agham Alam Hub, we have described the menstrual cycle and its phases. We have also explained the processes occurring in each phase. Finally, we appreciated the importance of feedback mechanisms involved in the menstrual cycle in maintaining homeostasis. Each month between puberty and menopause, a woman's body goes through several changes to get it ready for a possible pregnancy. This series of hormone-driven events is called menstrual cycle. During its menstrual cycle, an egg develops and is released from the ovaries. The lining of the uterus builds up. If a pregnancy doesn't happen, the uterine lining sheds during a menstrual period then the cycle starts again. A woman's menstrual cycle is divided into four phases. These are the menstrual phase, follicular phase, ovulation phase, and luteal phase. The length of each phase can differ from woman to woman, and it can change over time. 
The feedback mechanism is the process through which the level of one substance influences the level of another substance. This is important to maintain homeostasis or equilibrium balance in the body. In negative feedback, the rising levels of hormones feed back to the hypothalamus and pituitary gland to decrease the production of the hormones. While in the positive feedback, the rising levels of hormones feed back to increase hormone production. Ah. That's all for today, Saipals! Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. See you again next week for another Ah! Moment! Only here in Agham Alam Hub, Palajan SciTech Portal. Bye!